How about now? Okay. Good afternoon, folks. We're going to get started. So for those that don't know who I am, my name's Destiny Cooper. I know my name's not on the slide. It's not supposed to be. <laughs> I am these three presenters, GAP project officer, and they happened to ask me to do their introductions up here. So this year for these three presenters, it was kind of a year of synchronicity for them. Guy, who's gonna, I'm gonna let them do some introductions themselves. He has, for years now, I would say, had a very consolidated, short, brief work plan and progress reports. And I had both Roman and Brandy approach me this year to say, hey, we're trying to figure out how to do this in a way that's simpler and easier for us. And how do we do that? So what ended up happening was that each one of them separately met with Guy this year. And they kind of went over how Guy had been doing his things. You know, how did he set up his work plan? How did he do his progress reporting? And they all, both of them, and actually all three of them, came up with new ideas about how to approach what they're doing. And this presentation is meant to go over what is it that they were doing, what did they learn, and then how are they implementing it now, and what are they trying to do next? So you'll get to see that in the next 50 minutes. First one up is going to be Brandy. So I'm going to go ahead and have her come up here to start this. Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Brandy Hernandez, and I'm the Natural Resources Director for the Susanville Indian Rancheria also referred to as SAR. SAR is comprised of four tribes, the Maidu, the Paiute, the Pitt River, and the Washoe, and has been receiving GAP funds since 1997. During this presentation, we'll each be sharing our experience of why and how we condensed our work plans that in turn allowed for easier reporting and end of year evaluations. Our hope from this presentation is that each of you will leave this session with ideas on how condensing your work plan will make your GAP program easier. So the framework is straightforward and sequential by starting with a concise work plan that clearly outlines your commitments and desired outcomes. You more are able to have clearer work and efficient progress reporting, thus in turn, have an, a quicker end of year evaluation. So in 2024 or 2023, during our end of year evaluations with our project officer, it became apparent through multiple days of uh, challenging negotiations and discussions that our work plans had become extensive and was contributed from our initial work plan. I was introduced to Guy Taylor who has an impressively condensed uh, work plan. And from then, we began actively working with our project officer on ways that we can condense and simplify our work plans. So in 2023, our work plan started out at 28 pages. And by the end of our final report was a whopping 44 pages. In 2024, after we worked with our project officer on ways to reduce our work plan, it, we got it down to 13 pages. Here's an example of a 2023 component that was revised for our 2024 work plan. These edits were challenging at first with the fear that we were taking too much information out. But working with our project officer, we were able to gauge the right amount of detail that was needed. And keep in mind, this right amount of detail may vary among project officers. But starting these initial conversations with your project officer, you're able to start this process of condensing. Creating a concise work plan is a work in progress. And here are a few tips that helped me along the way. Work plan, when drafting your work plan, include the basics, the who, the what, the when, and the why. Clearly state who is responsible for each task in your commitment, if you have multiple employees. Clearly state your desired outcome and when you plan to have it accomplished. 
and why in your outcome. Utilize the SMART acronym, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. A simplified work plan helps you align your goals with action, improves execution for you and your staff by focusing on the key essential tasks that directly drive your projects and removing unnecessary steps and hurdles along the way allows for easier execution. Set achievable goals by ensuring your work commitments are consistent with your FTEs. If you add a commitment one year, consider taking a commitment out or increasing your FTEs. Limit one commitment per commitment by clearly stating your activity with one desired outcome. Simplifying your work plan also allows for flexibility during your implementation when adjustments are needed. Now that you have a concise work plan, you are set up to have easier reporting, thus more time can be spent on executing your gap deliverables. Adding details into your reporting doesn't always demonstrate the work being accomplished. By focusing on the core activities, using concise language in your reporting, you ensure that your project remains on track by more easily forecasting adjustments needed to achieve your deliverables. Your work plans should be annually evolving and not compounding. Simplicity is essentially understated when it comes to work plans. It allows for easier grant management from planning to execution to evaluations for both you and your grantor. So let's recap on this framework. Starting with a concise work plan that clearly outlines your activities, you're able to focus on what you're trying to achieve. You're set up for more efficient progress reporting that will in turn allow for easier and quicker end of year evaluations. I'll now turn over to Guy Taylor who will share a little bit about his experience and approach. Oh, or, or Roman. Hello, um, Roman Rona, I'm the um, Environmental Programs Manager for the Auction Engineering Community. Um, thank you for being here. Brandy, thank you for giving that uh, overview of what we all do. So this is a commitment um, when it was originally written. I have on my gap uh, grant, I have myself at 35%. I have an uh, environmental specialist at 100%. I have an air quality specialist at 20%, and I have a pesticide control specialist um, at 30%. So I have a lot of people on, on these grants, or on this grant, um, and the way it's all split out. And so here's an example of what it used to look like. You can see all the commitments. You see how long this thing is. I'm laying it all out. Everybody's what everybody's going to do, how, you know, all of the information. But if you look on over to where it says where US EPA will, 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 what they will get. And if you look at what I'm, what I committed um, at that point, they're going to get copies of the agenda presentations. They're going to get the handout materials. Um, you know, for two events. It's a lot of material. It's a lot of material that I'm given. And when Destiny, when we started looking at this and going, wait a minute, you know, in talking with, with Destiny, she's like, well, why don't you talk with Guy, as she's mentioned earlier. And yeah, because I, it's a lot. It's a lot for me and all of my staff to be doing all of that administrative work. At the same time, it's a lot of information that the tribe is giving up. And to me, that's the biggest thing. How much is the tribe giving up? Because remember, all of this stuff is foilable. And so you wanna limit what, you wanna meet what, what your commitment is, but you wanna limit the vulnerability of the tribe and the information that the tribe is giving out. 
And that's that del delicate balance that Brandy's talking about. So if you can answer those questions, the who, what, when, where, why, simply, just simply answer them. Don't get in depth of how and where and who and, you know, and at, you know, PCS, 30%, this is what they're going to do. And I'll get to that next one. So you see there's a lot here. This is that same one. This is that same commitment cut down. And on the deliverable portion of it, the project officer will receive a summary of planning meetings and actual event activities. So now I just get to give a brief summary or my staff gets to give me a brief summary of what they did. And I get to give, you know, at, at the, my meetings that I've attended, the brief summary. Attended this meeting, this is how it helps the community, end of story. I'm not having to give out brochures that we've done. I'm not having to give out, you know, all the information of who we met with and what we talked about and the ins and outs. Because once you open that can of worms up, if it gets foiled, then that information needs to be released. And so that's that de delicate balance. But you can see there's a big, huge difference in, in the two. Again, here's, a, here's an old commitment. Um, this one, again, will we'll summarize all the meetings um, and the benefits and, and what it would look like. So this is, uh, this one specifically, we're looking at for collaborative meetings with our local agencies in the area. We go way over four, but I know that four is comfortable. That, I mean, we're probably 15, 20. I don't know how many of you all are, are going, but we, we go through a lot. But I only have to measure four. If I don't put that number in there, now I'm subject to answering all 15 or 20 meetings, right? But I'm committed to saying comfortably that each one of us will attend four. And so the deliverable is I just have to pick which four. And if I meet that in the first quarter, I'm done. This is now over. Check this one off. Moving on. I don't even have to answer it anymore. So it's those types of things. You know, working with your project officer to say, well, what is, what is, for the amount of time that we're having on here, what's that number? What's that magic number? And that's when we start getting into the, some of those negotiations. So I went from a 15 page on the first go around. I think, I think it might've been a little bit more than 15 pages, but I went from a 15 page um, with, the, with all those uh, individuals on there to an 11 page work plan. I'm continuing to get better at it because I was always of the mindset that let's just give as much as possible so it shows the need, right? that we, we really need this money, so we're gonna give all this information, they know that you need it, or else you wouldn't be applying for it. You don't have to show all the things that you're, that, that you're giving and doing. Just do enough to get the money. I mean, that's plain and simple. So by doing some of the work that I was doing before, I was just creating my own administrative burden we're you know we're constant we're already under administrative burden but yet i was adding more administrative burden on top of the administrative burden that we all are doing so you know just keep it simple as brandy said keep it simple um the progress reporting for me is obviously a lot simpler the progress reporting that i'm sending out to my project officer is obviously a lot simple and then we're just being succinct. We're just we're just focused on the on the things that we have that we, we want, really want to kind of highlight that we're doing. And one of the suggestions that I, I always do is if I have a long term project, it's not I mean it's not on here, but if I have a long term project, I phase it out. 
first phase of this project, you know, if I'm going to be doing a, a, an educational garden, the first phase, I'm going to be researching for that first year. That second year, I might be continuing to do a more defined research, right? So I did a broad research on it, what's out there. The second year, I'm doing a little bit more refined. What kind of plants make sense to put in this thing? What, what exactly does that look like? The third year, I might get into, hey, you know, start reaching out to some potential bidders and seeing what that, those numbers look like, and then so on and so forth. You don't have to do this whole thing all in one fellow swoop. Don't do that. Phase out your projects. I have a compost project that I'm working on right now. First phase was, was trying it, figuring it out. Small um, composting that we were doing from our kitchen. And then we started to work that because we had to see what those ratios were going to be. We had to see the temperatures that actually worked. We had to do, you know, and then we went from that on cardboards and on ground to making a couple of boxes. So that was the second phase. Okay, we're going to start to grow it with add a couple of departments. The third phase is now we went into block walls and we're adding some additional ones to see how this is working, to see if this product is actually, you know, viable. At that point, planting some seeds, seeing if what's, you know, what is going to come out, are, are, are we reaching the temperatures hot, hot enough? And now we have in our final phase that we're doing the um, full on composting project. So my next steps will then be, okay, now we're going to grow it. So I've even sub sub phased, you know, the, the whole, the whole project, right? So the next, now I'm going to add some departments. I'm going to start adding more and then and then slowly just phasing out. And that's a long term project. So it's a long term project, but keep it simple. I'm going to now turn it on over to to Guy and he's really going to get into how to keep it simple because he's the mastermind of this. That's all I have to say. No. Uh, uh, Guy Taylor, Mortiano Rancheria. I have been their environmental director since 1997. So I've, I've been here a minute. Um, prior, in a prior life, I did security work. And part of that was writing reports. And I was taught to think of the client. What does the client want to see? Does he want to see... 15 pages of information when a sentence would be sufficient. And so I've always kind of carried that with me and it got me in trouble when I was in school, in college. But uh, in this case, it worked out pretty well. Um, the idea is just keep it super simple. Um, sorry, it's been a minute. <laughs> um, this is a commitment that we have. This is the entire commitment. Um, this was for doing a, uh, a video on TEK. Um, you can see it's just, it is boiled down to its basic elements. It's really simple. Um, what's deliverable is pretty simple. Um, the idea is adding a lot of detail to this will really box you into what you have to do. If you're not, you're promising an end result, not the trip. So if you keep it um, simple, it's easier to uh, have flexibility and be able to move within your work plan to accomplish what you're supposed to be accomplishing. This is also important. The EPA does not need to know what color your socks are. They wanna know what you did and they wanna see the deliverable you promised them. They don't need to know how many times you met with a given person. Um, 
it's really the details. It's, it just is that simple. Uh, sorry, I'm floundering a little bit here. Oh, this, one forward. this is a progress report. Um, you can see it's, uh, it's not the one I thought I had in there. I must have switched it. At any rate, um, the deliverables are there. What we did during the quarter was there. And if the, if the commitment or the component was uh, complete, work complete. No need to continue working on that. Um, you all, the, always have the opportunity you always had the opportunity to, um, like in the first one, researching equipment. I actually did that multiple times because I wanted a few options, but the commitment was really over in the first quarter. And now I'm gonna turn it back over to Roman. Sorry. All right, so. Sorry, I just wanna wake you up. Did it work? All right, good. Too well? <laughs> so this is the budget cheat sheet. This is one that uh, I uh, was given um, and uh, I won't say from who, my PO. Um, but this is the budget cheat sheet. This is basically how you get your budget and your uh, component and your fringe and everything else to all line up. How many of you get to do your budgets and everything else and then you get there and then you're like, oh my goodness, it doesn't match. And then you start all over and then a week later you're still figuring it out and you're like, oh the hell with this, I'm gonna send it in. <laughs> and then your project officer is gonna come back and go, um, it doesn't match and I go, yeah, I know. <laughs> Can you help me make it match, right? Even with this cheat sheet, Destiny can, Destiny can attest, I still do it. I still do it because I don't do this enough. I do it once a year or twice, you know, twice in a year. And there's eight months that I'm not doing it. But basically, you're getting your personnel. So all your percentages that you have for each, each component. So C1 is component one, C2, C3, right? And so on. So as many as you have. And you get your staff percentage that you're putting into that each component and you multiply that by their salary. And you do that all the way across the board. Then you get your fringe and you include, um, this is where I see this is where I get confused at. Destiny, you can chime in here at any second, but um, then you get your personnel and then you use your, your fringe benefits as well. And you combine those. You get your estimated travel, that's just gonna be what it is. There's no rocket science to that. Your supplies, you know, all of that other information. Your direct total charge is gonna be your totals from what you get above one, two, three, four, five. All of that will total your direct charges and then whatever your IDC is, you're gonna multiply that. And then, then you'll get your totals at the base. Sounds a lot simpler, wait till you do it and then it won't be. You'll be calling your project officer or you're just mailing it in with the wrong numbers. And they're gonna call you back and say, you're mismatched, what are we doing? Uh, whatever the highest number is. Um, but I, this, this is not mine. If anybody wants it, um, I can email it out to you or you can take a quick picture of it. Um, so, but that's, that's been the basic cheat sheet all the way across the board, and then you line them all up, mold them, uh, add them all together, and voila. You got a simple work plan, and you got your budget to line up with it, and you can be like, woohoo, for the first time ever, and send it in. Then your project officer can call you back and be like, yeah, I'm sorry, we're gonna have to cut. Just kidding, just kidding. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, I think, that was the end of our 
formal presentation. Yes. <laughs> I have a couple questions for you three, actually, all of you three. How many FTEs on each one of your work plans and budgets? I think Roman answered that, but Brandine Guy. How many total FTEs? Total and then like how you break it up or however you want to answer it. Okay. Um, I think currently we are um, at roughly 90%. Well, for Gap, it's 60% for each of our, my three employees. Um, and yeah, going through each component and actually diving in to see how much time one activity is going to require is kind of an estimation of hours of how we kind of break it out. Um, and yeah. My answer uh, is much simpler. One, uh, I'm the only one in my department in, under GAP. Uh, I have a water tech who is under 106.319. So the second question is, when it was talked about for performance, is it possible to go over what's agreed to and how does that influence the evaluation? So you mentioned, Roman, that like for one of the examples you went over, there's only four meetings. What if you do more than four and report more than four? What does that mean? If there's more than four meetings and I've, rep and I've said that there's four, only four meetings that I'm reporting on, then I've only reported on four meetings. I'm only reporting on four meetings. She's shaking her head no. It means if you do more, you report more, oh, and you get credit yeah. for more. Yes. And yeah. Oh, sorry. Up. Yes. So, sorry, I didn't understand the question. But yes, if I re if I go to 15 meetings and I'm, I've 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 commit I've done this commitment by meeting the four, but let's say that there's something else in your work plan that you didn't quite finish, but I went to 15 meetings or 180 meetings. All of those meetings can then go toward that commitment, or a commitment that you didn't finish. So it balances it out. So you still want to report them, but you're technically done with this. So she can write, in, in our case, she does a, a percentage and she can be like, okay, you've done this at 100%. But down here, you only did it at 50, but all of these other meetings make up for that. So then now you're at 100% on commitment 35 or whatever it is, right? Yeah, I pretty much have the same answer. Um, there's quite a few of them that I go over, and, and it works to balance out of some of those that might be a little lacking. Um, of course, you you know your goal is 100% on everything, but um, that's a, a rare occasion, I think. Yeah, and that's what's sorry. That's what's nice is that you can't fully project how your whole year is going to be planned out and what opportunities will arise. So being able to report on, hey, we only said that we were going to do four meetings, but we did 10. You can see where our work time went and it's valuable time. So it's nice that just reporting on the work that you're doing can be accounted for on your shortcomings. And I ask these questions to give the audience a chance to come up with their own. But my last comment is, is that for the slides themselves, all the slides, they're already available on Excel events. So if you don't know that app, you can go to the check-in, um, the conference check-in, and they'll set you up with being able to access that. But they're actually already posted, so you can access them there. Who else has questions? <laughs> Brian Davidson, Intertribal Council of Arizona. Did you ever come into issues where when you're writing your work plan uh, and you have to involve, let's say, an outside source, a third party in, let's say, a household hazardous waste event or something else where you brought in somebody else, where you specifically had to state who that was and what their role was, exactly what, like how much they were going to cost and that kind of stuff. And some of these some of these prices or some of these beings, you don't know just yet. And what do you do about that? So I think breaking out what phase you're in of that process of whatever you're trying to achieve, just being transparent of where you're at of, okay, I'm going to outsource to look for 
um, a contractor or whoever it may be is the initial initial you know stage so you know just being transparent in your work plan and then if by the middle of the year you've secured you know the, this person that you're looking to outsource and those um, costs become clear, then, you know, you always have the opportunity to touch base with your project officer to do budget revisions. Um, for, for me, the key is, is educated guesswork um, and also reaching out to people in advance that you might uh, be able to get ideas from. Um, you know, my neighbor at Enterprise, if I have a question and it's something that she's done, I don't have a problem calling her and saying, hey, about what would that have cost? Who did you go through? She feels the same for me, you know, we do the same thing. We're actually cousins. <laughs> she's right there. Um, so just educated guesses and uh, overestimate. It's always a good plan because it's easy to not take the money, but it's hard to find the money when you don't have it. And for me, we actually went through an HHW event. It was a door-to-door -door event. Um, it was pretty simple because not a lot of contractors do door-to-door -door events, but we wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, and we have about 700 households, a little over 700 households, plus I think 50 apartments. So it wasn't, it, it was a pretty good sized task, but it's not outrageous. But we just went and literally got quotes and, and, and estimated what those quotes are gonna be. Um, knowing that there's probably going to be some kind of increase, as Guy was saying. I mean, you want to you want to give yourself a buffer, but not but not tell the EPA that you're giving the buffer, because I think it's if I'm not mistaken, it's technically you shouldn't be able to do that, right? It's not. Is it is it not okay? I'm looking at you. <laughs> here, here you go. Like contingency stuff or. We're not allowed to technically approve contingencies, but if you go ahead and project higher, um, we do have some requirements to review things like reasonableness, but we look at these numbers across the whole region and everywhere varies. So it is one of those things to kind of ask your PO before you project about what do they think may be reasonable and then figuring out from there you know, asking your friends at our talk, calling them up in between to ask what they've done and kind of what they've seen. And then we can go from there to work with it. If it comes in lower, that's fine. We can figure out with, you know, what else to do with the funds left over. If it comes in higher, the conversations can be, well, does that mean that it needs to be done this year? And in that case, what work, what other work may not get done? Cause you, we don't have the money in the grant yet. Um, so there's adjustments that can be made. Cool, thank you. <laughs>